Right, welcome everybody to another episode of Spot of Nerd. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I'm talking with a wee bit of an accent right now. Currently watching T2 Train Spotting. Choose your future. Choose wishing you'd done it all differently. Choose life. Which is a great fucking movie, and it makes you want to talk like Irish, mixed with a bit of Scottish, mixed with a bit of a little bit of European in there. So you're gonna pay attention to the accents. You're not really gonna pay attention to the review. So just bear with me on that. But let's start the show. fifth film was quite brilliant. I actually, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the characters. It's it's quite interesting. As movies continue to go past the trilogy phase, I find that they get a wee bit better. Number one, Fantastic, the first pirate. Number two and three, I referenced to the Matrix films. To this day, I still don't have a fucking clue what they're about. They were great films, but I don't have a fucking clue what the story was or what they were trying to go there. Fourth Pirates film, fucking horrendous. Don't know what they were trying to go with there. I'll tell you what, they've set up a lot for the future. The whole story is based from William Turner's child. We all remember William Turner and Elizabeth Swan. The good thing about this film, of course, is they don't touch too much on their story. You've got Salazar, who is after Jack Sparrow. I don't know what you want to call it, but really it's a fucking zombie pirate. And how, even if you fucking hate these films, fucking zombie pirates. We are introduced to a lovely gal, Barbosa's daughter. You might have actually seen her as well in uh, Skin, a good UK show. So there's this thing called the Trident of Poseidon, which apparently cures everything of everything or something like that. So essentially the storyline means William and Elizabeth Swan's child is trying to find it so that he can resurrect his dad to make sure he doesn't have to control the Dutchman. She's just trying to find her dad, which actually in the end of it, she realizes, oh shit, it's Barbosa. He dies. Does he die? Because let's face it, these people keep popping up every movie. They never fucking die. In order for Jack Sparrow not to get murdered by Salazar, it's just like Star Wars. All these characters have different storylines and then all of a sudden they come together and then they have to work together in order to make things happen. So melt your heart, especially with the, again, spoiler, uh, the Elizabeth Swan and William Turner reunion. Incredibly overdone in terms of cheesy cliché-ness. Fucking magic. There was lots of great things about this film besides the writing and the overall production. The CGI was bloody brilliant. The only thing I could say I didn't enjoy. In the trailer, you'll see a young Jack Sparrow. I don't know if Disney had a bit of a low budget or if they just didn't spend enough time with it, but dreadful, absolutely dreadful. You know those old films where they're talking English, but it's like, I want there. Dreadfully dubbed. Fucking clue what he was saying. I mean, I did understand it, but again, you're like, he's miming and the words are, they're not mixing together. So that was probably the only thing I didn't quite enjoy. If you're looking for something that's just fun for the kids and the family, but also continuing the adventures of what they've already started with the Pirates of the Caribbean series, fucking brilliant. I'll give this film a solid three and a half stars out of five. It takes a little longer than usual to get the story going, but of course, you're also trying to develop these new characters. You've got Will's child and you've got Barbosa's child. So it's kind of cool, but I'll I also really enjoyed the fact that they stepped away from Jack Sparrow a wee bit. I think, don't get me wrong, I think Johnny Depp does a great Captain Sparrow, but sometimes it can be a little bit overdone and I think that's where they went wrong in the fourth film is they focused way too much attention on Jack bloody Sparrow. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this episode up. It's a wee bit brief. I do apologize that I have not been able to get any new content out to the public. I do want to say a huge thank you to everybody that is supporting me, whether it's on the social medias. Continue to do that. Tell your friends, tell your family. Coming up, we have San Diego bloody Comic Con. It is less than a month away, so I am extremely, extremely happy about that you'll also enjoy I'm hopefully gonna be able to get here pretty soon because I want to make sure I have a lady present when I do a review I'm going to review the Wonder Woman film because I am the only human being apparently on the planet that thought that movie was shite but not for the reasons that you might think it was shite the reason Wonder Woman was shite was because it was continuing DC's trend 
of just being shite films. It had more slow motion scenes than fucking J.J. Abrams put lens flares. Coming from Batman vs Superman, Wonder Woman was the only thing that saved that film and I was quite rooting for her own solo. It was horrible. And I love everybody saying, oh but this is the first time a female's been, you know, like, women power. Ah, uh, I call bullshit. Have we not heard of Sarah Connor? Have we not heard of Ripley? Get away from her, you bitch! Have we not heard of Dorothy, for Christ's sake? Have we not heard of Charmed? Have we not heard of Buffy? I mean, I could keep going, but there's been many, many female leads in the past that have absolutely killed their roles and proven that women can be just as badass as fucking men. Sorry to say it, it was absolute shite. We shall continue that another time. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Good day, lads. On deck, you scabrous dogs! Hands for braces! Let go and hold to run free! Now, bring me that horizon. And really bad eggs. Drink up, me hearty Joe Ho.